You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich, at the Jacklich Law Group. Good evening, and welcome to the final Big Dog Post Game Show of the Maryland football season, at least the regular season, until we get to bowl time. Maryland, 42-24 over Rutgers, gets the seventh win of the season. I'm Wayne, that's Mason. Mason, what'd you see out there tonight? Yeah, Terps, uh, as Hawks loves to say, they started fast, they finished strong, they got it done. Uh, number seven in the win column. Uh, can't believe the season's over, but look, Leo breaks the passing record. Overall, strong performance from Maryland. They took care of business. You just wish they could have a couple more times this year and, and really uh, made something out of it. But hey, we're here, on to the bowl game, and uh, another win against Rutgers. Yeah, uh, going to Rutgers and having a win at the end of the season has become a, a bit of a tradition around here. Maryland almost uh, almost blew them out. And then the fumble, the interception, and all of a sudden Rutgers was back in it. Deitches was used really well today. Ty Felton had a strong game. 113 yards on the ground, most of it late by Hemby. Um, you, you made a comment that if Maryland had played with this level of confidence, they might have won another game or two. Yeah, I think I said it on the Young Terps pod this week that, you know, playing and believing that you can win is is such a it's such an empowering thing. And, you know, as our friend Special K used to always say, you gotta believe. You know, we believe that that, that just means so much more um to your players when they when they play inspired football like they did last week, like they did early on in the game today. It kinda weared a little bit when I think they uh, got a little bit excited that they could have, you know, really put a beating on Rutgers today. Yeah. They started to get a little bit overconfident, which we've seen at times this year. But sure. a little it, bit of ball hawking from the yeah. secondary. Uh, but but if you put it back together when they needed it, if you look at the play of Jay Sean Barham and Bo Braid and Glenn Miller over these past couple games, and Jaquan Shepard's another one who's had two mm -hmm. fantastic games to finish off the season. Mm -hmm. You just see them playing much more with the belief that they can and they will win games. And, and when you play that empowered style of football, you find yourself when things get tough, really being able to rely on the fact that we can and we will and and we, we really believe in ourselves. Right. Uh, Leah had some deep throws, a lot of screen game, a good bit of that work today. Billy Edwards comes in, a few more touchdowns, five touchdowns in two games. Just that one play has sort of transferred Maryland from a team that couldn't get a yard to a team that seems to get a yard every time they need it. Yeah, the turtle push is is a really, really strong play for Maryland. The linemen do really well at getting low. Uh, you mentioned it this year. They really have struggled in those short yardage packages, but they tried it earlier in the season. It fumbled a couple times. I think one of them actually picked up and threw for a touchdown. Uh, Locks said that it wasn't worth the turnovers, but, you know, again, it, it just shows that you can go back to things as a coach that sometimes don't work, and, and they can really – be a positive effect now in the in the last two games, and I'm sure we'll see it plenty in the bowl game as well. Somebody that we haven't talked about much is is a Trey Colbert, who's number 93, yeah. who seems to be the one guy that's on the field the most on the defensive line. Where'd Maryland find him? Yeah, Angelo State. I called him out in my uh, Northwestern rant, for those of you that watch us regularly here. Uh, but he's put together a really, really solid second half. Again, him and Corey Bullock are just a testament to what this staff can do in the portal, they're going to need to do it again this year. We'll have a lot more on that on the podcast um, with Ahmed. But look, guy can stop the run. And, and that's something this team struggled with throughout the year. I think Isaac Bunyan was still a little bit banged up. I don't even recall seeing him in the game today. Play. Disappointing that he did not play uh, in his final regular season game with Maryland. But I'm sure we'll see him in the bowl. Look, guys who can stop the run is something that this defensive line who has a chance to be absolutely great if they can return Donnell Brown, which is the way it's looking like right now. Um, really can take a huge step forward. They just got to find a couple of plug-in pieces like a Trey Colbert for next year because I believe his el eligibility, he may be out of it, but who knows anymore with any of this stuff. Yep. So those portal pieces, a couple of those lineman portal pieces actually did work out, and that's pretty good to see. The one, I don't know what actually happened to him, but Ayedze, the right tackle, got hurt, and Fagan was back in there, and they struggled a little bit with that. But overall, the one thing from watching the telecast, which we did today, uh, because Matt Millen provides an outside perspective, his rating of what's going on at Maryland is probably higher than ours. I spoke to Bruce, who was on travel. He said he went out and played golf. He had his Maryland stuff. And multiple people mentioned 
how well Maryland's been playing in this turnaround, and they almost beat Michigan. And I guess from seeing it every week, it starts with expectation. And as you know, as Mason says, if you've been watching this, uh, Mason picked them at nine and three, and I yeah, picked, I was at eight and four. They end up at seven and five. And when you think you should win nine games, and if you had beaten Illinois, which you could have, or beaten Northwestern, which you could have, what a difference that would have made. But that's not what happened. And overall, I'm happy because it still is Maryland and three bowls in a row. It's pretty good. Yeah, and actually, it's pretty good. Right, especially if they can win these games. And you know, people like to say they don't matter. Uh, you know, all, all that. But for a program like this, it does matter when every opportunity you have on a national stage to win games and. Look, you hear it in Loxley's hype video at the beginning that they played of every game this year. It starts with the belief, and, and that's something that I think needs to be worked on and, and will continue to grow mm -hmm. with this program mm -hmm. is the belief that every Saturday they can be the better team. A lot of the Saturdays, more than not, they should be the better team, and eventually they will break through. Eventually. It, so we're going to head to break here. Um, uh, final word from Rick Jacklich and from Viner Forgates. We'll be back in a moment. To talk about what comes next with the Maryland football season. The biggest difference in a truck accident versus a car crash is the investigation that the lawyer has to do right from the beginning of the case. Number one is obtaining the logbooks of the driver to show that the driver was not rested properly according to federal law. Uh, investigating through the black box and getting an expert to figure out from the black box of the truck, the speed of the truck, or where the truck had been. So it's just different type of handling. Usually you have catastrophic injuries involved with tractor trailers as well. You have a massive, heavy vehicle that strikes a much smaller vehicle. You're going to have more massive injuries. So it's a different ball game. And if people are injured in a truck crash, they really, really need to find a lawyer that knows what he's doing with truck crashes. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Foregates. We make your company work. I'm Arthur Smith with Viner Foregates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. All right, back here in the Viner Foregates studio. As we wrap up the regular season for 2023, there's a couple of teams that didn't make a bowl that have been going to bowls quite regularly. And then there's Northwestern, who had a real turnaround season. So Northwestern makes it. Minnesota and Illinois do not? Yeah, Minnesota and Illinois fall short today, which puts the Terps uh, in position, I think, for the Las Vegas Bowl at this point. That's, that's what um, I guess we'll throw out the sources have told us. That's where they would land if they pulled off number seven. Uh, today and and look a uh, couple of those teams that really could have gotten into competition for it. Minnesota being the main one having played in some of the bowl games that the Terps were looking at um, there they fall short against Wisconsin uh, Illinois obviously doesn't get it done uh, they would have been in that same sort of seven and five mid tier bowl running so we'll see where things line up here over the next couple of days outside shots at the Music City Bowl outside shot at the Real Quest or formerly known as the Outback Bowl. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll see where Maryland uh, lands here, and it's it's that time of year. It's the favorite time of year. Lox is going to hit that recruiting trail hard starting on Monday. Mm -hmm. Going to hit the portal as soon as that gets open here in a couple of weeks. We'll see some rumblings mm -hmm. uh, from that over the next couple of days. But really, college football is done. It was a great day of football today. Yeah. Um, it was great. I think our favorite endings, the Iowa-Nebraska game. Nebraska does not get the sixth win. And then the Milrow Miracle. Yeah, the Milrow Miracle today in the Iron Bowl, which happened during Maryland's, I guess, nearly four-hour bout with Rutgers. But a couple right. guys that you got to shout out in the game. Jay Sean Jones gets a 2,000 career receiving yards today. You already mentioned it. Corey Deitches probably locks in the second most catches for a tight end this year uh, in the FBS. Of course, Leah crosses that line. Roman Hemby puts up another 100-yard rushing mm -hmm. game. Then on the defensive side of the ball, uh, the Terps just continue to swarm to the football. Great linebacker play throughout the game today. Really good against Manungai, who will finish the season as the leading rusher yep. uh, in the Big Ten. 118 today. That'll wrap it up. We will see you after basketball in the coming weeks, and we will have our bowl specials as Maryland comes out with the press conferences announcing where they're going for the bowl, and, of course, we'll be headed to that bowl game. Thanks for watching all season. We love doing this. Uh, really appreciate it when you like and comment on the uh, YouTube page. So thanks to all of you viewers. I'm Wayne, that's Mason, Bruce is away from the camera. 
We'll see you in a few days after basketball. Good evening.